Salute. I know you know you talk about Randall. How did you think Obi played this game? Um, I think Obi played well. Like he played. Like, I mean, he played as good as I think that we'd expect him to play. I mean, 18 points, 7 of 15 from 3, 12, 11 from 3. Um, I did like the fact, and, and I think the major stat is eight rebounds. He had eight rebounds today, so he definitely crashed the boards as well. I had no issue with Obi's game today. You know, he also, um, I think he played with, he, I think he played well within the offense, you know, just, especially when the Knicks had the ball movement in the first half. Yeah. That's when he really shined. Yeah. Yeah, in the fourth quarter, the Knicks kind of got away from the ball movement that they had in the first half, and then when he started to pack the paint, that, that I think that made guys like Obi and other guys a little less effective in the second half. But overall, I think Obi played a good game, and I think like even though Obi played well, I don't want people to feel like as if the Knicks don't need Randall. Because, you know, because, because the way some Knicks fans are on Twitter, they feel like, you know, the Knicks play much better with Obi and this and that. And, I, and Obi does add another dimension to the Knicks. But people have to not disregard Randall because if, the, because if Randall is not healthy this series, the Knicks are going to lose this series. They're going to need Randall to play well and dominate in the paint and be physical because the one thing that he, this Heat team is, this Heat team is physical. And with Mitch alone in the paint, having to battle Bam, having to battle Kevin Love and this and that, he was a little less effective. Knicks is going to need another big body in the paint yeah. to handle these guys. Around. And that's where I think Randall's going to be more effective than Obi because Randall is just a more physical guy than Obi. He's going to be able to handle more of the heat's physicality within the paint. So Obi played well today. I had no issues with his game. But I just don't want people to like discredit Randall because Obi plays well. Like the Knicks are going to need Randall in this series as well if they're going to get past the heat. Ryan hit the, the nail on the head again. Uh, really great analysis today, Ryan. Shout out. I, I agree 100%. Obi is extremely effective when the ball is moving and the Knicks have momentum. Going downhill, there's no one on the heat can stop him, not even Bam, Bam Adebayo. But when things slow down into a grind, like they did in the fourth quarter with Spose adjustments, he's very ineffective. You know, I think he was really he was dangerous when you know he's catching it on the break and pulling up to three but when he's rotating on the corner and you know trying to pull up from, from a corner and, and three-point opportunities he was really i mean the heat would just let him shoot and those brit shots were leading to a lot of transition points for the heat so the, all those things that he's able to do downhill he's not able to do uh when he tries to catch and shoot or catch and drive it's just not the same level of effectiveness and the heat really locked down on that and, and just dared him to shoot in the fourth quarter. I was getting so many texts in my group chats about like, we're, we can live with Obi shooting. Like, you know, let's, let's, that's a game plan is allow Obi to shoot, which is different when Julius Randle's in the game because not, not only is Julius Randle good in the half court or a transition, he's dominant, one of the best players in isolation sets as well in terms of like points per possession. So we need, we need Randle. I don't know if we need him back next game, but definitely once we're in Miami. Hopefully we have that split. We're absolutely going to need him away because more than any other player on this team, he plays better away than he does at home. Yo, it's funny. I'm comfortable with Obi shooting, to be honest with you. Like, even if you look at the the, the, the shots today, <laughs> 36% from three. Like, he's the only one who kind of hit, uh, like, an NBA average on the team from the three-point line. You know what I mean? So, to me, it's, it's, I'm not worried about leaving Obi open to three I, like he's to me really enough he's st he still seems the most confident maybe because he's had to live under the pressure of living and dying by shots by Tib. he's he's kind of like built him up for the playoffs a little bit where it doesn't matter to him but um I do agree with your your Randall take for me it's just more of a variety um offensively for us another way to generate points and wide open looks it's, it's harder to scheme like you said they schemed that second half to get uh, RJ less open looks is harder to scheme for three guys who can be offensive playmakers at the same time. So I, I that's my um my reason for having uh, Randall back, and he looked he looked good in in warmups today. So I thought maybe he might be yeah. back in game three, but it, it could be possible he's back for game two for sure. And shoot, to be honest with you, I'm not sure if they're gonna have um, Jimmy Butler game two because. Jimmy Butler twisted his ankle and he looked hobbled. And one of the one of the things that was a little bit annoying is we didn't attack him. Yeah. And 
the Heat did a really good job of keeping the ball out of Jalen Brunson's hands for a huge amount of time in that fourth quarter because Jalen Brunson really saw the ball. Um, RJ had to do a lot of decision making, and he's grown. He's grown a lot over these series. The fourth quarter wasn't the best for him, and I I don't think he knew how to attack or when to attack when that happened. I don't know what. Like, even sometimes... I even heard that the announcers go, oh, attack him in the pick and roll. I'm like, why attack him in the pick and roll? They're just going to switch. Like, to me, if I have my man on one leg and you want to keep him in the game, clear out. <laughs> I don't need a pick so you can just switch the other guy on me. Clear out. Unless it's some other, unless the other guy is like, you know, well, I mean, maybe if he's two, two feet taller than me, it makes a difference. But, man, I saw Jimmy on one ankle. <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? But that that's one of those on the moment things where you gotta have to just know have your instincts about you or yep. the coach has to point that out. Well said. You know what I mean? Yeah. Good point. Yeah, and I do wanna just say one thing right quick because I do agree with me and I'm gonna take a book out of I, I'm gonna take a page out of JLC book for this one with Randall. I'd rather I would rather Randall not play game two and just have him rest because the Knicks have about, I think, three full days off between yeah. game two and game three. And I feel like the Knicks can win without OB, I mean, without Randall at the Garden. They just need to tweak a few things and hit some three-pointers. If the Knicks were hitting threes today, the Knicks would have won the game. 100%. So if, if, the Knicks, if the Knicks can hit their shots and limit their turnovers, I do feel like the Knicks can steal one without Randall at the Garden. But yeah, when they go to Miami... Yeah, Randall needs to be up and ready for game three. He, the Knicks are definitely going to need him on the road in Miami. This loss felt very different than the Atlanta Hawks game one loss two years ago, where like I was like, oh, shit, Reggie Bullitt sucks. Nerlens Noel <laughs> sucks. <laughs> like, Julius Randall was getting doubled. Alfred Payton blows. Like, Alfred Payton could not play professional basketball in this playoff yeah. setting. I didn't have those feelings today. I was like, oh, there's Josh Hart, 0 for 4. You know, there's Jalen Brunson, 0 for 7. Like, Grimes, 1 for 4, whatever it was. Guys just missed threes. If one or two of those guys hit 50%, we win the game, and we're up one nothing. I thought the defensive strategy, I thought Tibbs' rotations, I really thought everything was pretty crisp. Yeah. I thought Tibbs coached a pretty good game. I don't put any blame on Tom Thibodeau for, for this loss. Guys just missed shots. Yeah. And I think if you take that approach, and I think the players are too, we're going to not stop them, but we're going to win games. To and then go to Miami, where we're actually better on the road than we are at home. You know that is home too, MSG South. Exactly. <laughs> MSG, MSG, <laughs> now, now you're right. You're absolutely right, though. Like when I'm looking, when I'm looking around, I'm like all right, Josh Hart. Even with, uh, sometimes when Josh Hart doesn't is even help the scouts, us sometimes even in those moments he ends up hitting the big shot for us. He did not hit the big shot for us today. You know what I mean? So it, it, I've come accustomed to him, to him just being fumbly and then just hitting a three. <laughs> and that didn't happen today. So I, I feel like stuff like that is going to happen today. I feel like we did some good things. Jimmy Butler, yeah. we kind of forced Jimmy Butler to be, um, to get all his baskets off ball. Like the way he was torturing the Bucks when he was ISO in this, he wasn't really able to do that today. The way he got his buckets Max. was was leaking out, you know, leaking out and, and getting, you know, fast break points. And they did, kudos to Jimmy, they, they took advantage. Of Josh's heart's uh, propensity to offensive rebound, they leaked out, threw, threw a touchdown pass, got some easy buckets that way. They, I felt like the Knicks did a pretty good job when Kevin Love was on the court. I felt like Mitch did a decent job, like actually contesting threes. I, I, I felt like he did a decent job yes. of that. Um, schematically though, we still with Mitch out, we like we're still a little bit vulnerable because our guys can't aren't really that good at uh hoping when people attack when Mitch is out there. But I, I thought Mitch did a pretty decent job on that. I, I felt like overall, we took away a lot of their first option stuff pretty effectively. We, mm -hmm. we just have to hit shots. We were we shot 18% from three at halftime, and we're up by five. 18% from three, <laughs> up by five. So we, we just got to hit shots. And hold on. Emmanuel quickly. Matt, can you please come to the playoffs? Please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Emmanuel. Emmanuel.